never see it cry just a little too long. Now it's time for me to be strong. Now just to make ends meet. God damn. In her clothes and lavish mansions, where it seems ordinary people can transform into stars with mountains of money. Making it as a mainstream artist is supposed to be the key to happiness, popularity, and fulfillment. Everybody wants to be a rapper. But there's a side often left unmentioned. People do favors for those they know, while overlooking those that genuinely have a dream. Here's why you will never become a mainstream artist. Nepotism exists in the music industry. And so does each level of society. It is designed to keep you out, while they give you trap music. Rap, it's an industry based on nepotism, it promotes from within. No matter how much talent you have. If you're on the inside they can hire writers, makeup artists, and stylists to glamorize their puppets. It makes us believe that artists have real talent. Take a Lil Yaddy for an example. Notice the lack of talent as he tries to rap. Trying to stack for a championship ring, baby. Trying to stack, trying to do some real things, baby. Hold on. Mm. Hey, hey, the beat was slow, so I had to give a rhythm verse. Oh, had to pull off in the black hearse. Oh, had to do it for a little B, put a curse. Oh, on me. Mm, mm, fill in the beat. Oh, mm. No, I'd never do that. I always give a written verse because I just don't want to go out like that. Yeah, if I was on the street, it would be spinning vinyl. They mad because the nigga just went viral. They mad because you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't hide me up like that. Um, uh, yeah, um, not a kid really selling. Uh, in high school, I never was spelling. I think, I think, I think that's why they mad at me. They mad because they fish trying to grab it. They mad Oh, my fault. My, I got ice. You can't, you can't do that, right, though. All right, one more time. One you more can't, time. you can't put the right, pressure right, like right, that. Okay, my fault. Go. Okay. Um, uh, hey. Young nigga from the west side of town. Got a shit. Young nigga from the west side of town. Red hair, gold teeth, but a nigga not a clown. I'm trying to think what to do. I don't know. I'm not a rapper. Yo, wait, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. See, I'm trying to think what to do. Mm, I'm not so a rapper. So people who love. No. I'm not a rapper. Yo. Now, when he comes back to the radio station, you can tell he was given a rider. You want to rhyme? I know a beat I need, though. Tell me, tell me. I need, I need flavor. Here. I'm about to put Yachty on top of this beat here, Beats One. We're gonna let this record run real quick. Uh, yeah. Hey, Lucy Ducey, the joke's on you. I didn't grow up the boosie. All I care about is feeding my family and getting out of that Camry. I'm in the bands and I'm hitting a Bentley. I'm reading texts from last night. She said, I love how you bent me. I just bought a Benz and it said, please tempt me. You want to buy it, but you can't. So you're renting. You'll take it back in six months. If there's no denting, 7K for the BBS white diamond dentals. They say, Yadi, yeah, you that with the jingle bell rap. I'm cool with that. Cause every look at my jingle and I'll fool with that. I finger roll the ABA in. Top floor penthouse where I'm staying. I grew up watching Even Stevens. Now Steven ain't nearly as evening, but I'm makes sense. Here's his father. He's in my blood. I had the opportunity to go in the dark room with my dad. Shannon McCollum, a photographer who works with all A-list celebrities. His father, also a retired photojournalist who worked with Muhammad Ali, Nelson Mandela, and more, which they all have been in and out of Lil Yadi's father's childhood home. Nepotism could be a good thing, but a bad case of nepotism is what we're seeing now, in which the whole world became subject to one idea. Everyone goes along with agendas, forcing things like the COVID shot, and agendas with fake police shootings on the public digital display of names honoring those who have died at the hands of police brutality. Today, Snoop Dogg and the game are taking matters into their own hands by marching to LAPD headquarters. You can't match hate with hate. You gotta match hate with love, and that's what we came for today in a love offering to sit down and have some dialogue. Their intent is to make California government aware that minority groups will no longer stand for inhumane treatment from law officials. The entertainment business has been a total meritocracy right from the get-go. 
I believe some of these rappers are actually the relatives of said employees, producers, publicists, masons, DJs, ex rappers, etc. Let's take Megan the Stallion, for example. Megan's mother Holly Thomas was also allegedly a rapper connected to DJ Screw, releasing music from 2001 to 2007. As a side note, I will admit that her alleged mother looks like a man. Sometimes I wonder if it's a play on words with her rap name being Holly Wood Wood being associated with man and erections. Also, a stallion refers to a male horse. I'm not suggesting Megan the stallion is a man. I'm saying there could be something involving transgenders in Megan's future script. For now, keep an eye out for Megan the stallion's brother. I mean mother. Back to nepotism. We've witnessed a person say they wanted to be a rapper, work hard, grind, and suffer the years of sacrifice, only to become a local celebrity, with no connections, no Masonic groups behind them, they're under the illusion that a hit song is all it takes. Yet I've personally seen a major artist buy a local celebrity song, while leaving the original artist stuck performing it at local clubs. I will not mention the names. So why gamble with your life? Seeing a person go from obscurity to a known entity is inspiring, but it's also an illusion. How can what I've seen be an illusion you might ask? It's simple, the house always wins. The music industry isn't too different from a casino. If you throw $100 in a slot machine, you'll get $90 back. You leave thinking, you weren't that bad. But you just willingly gave away $10 to sit down and press a button. Sit long enough and you leave and give them that $90 as well as hours of your day. That's the music industry. Every year there's enough rappers, new and old, signing deals, releasing songs, generating press, keeping the proverbial wheels turning, enough to justify the labels, enough to keep TuneCore and other aggregators in business. They sneak these artists in through sites such as SoundCloud, YouTube, Twitter, and in the past, MySpace. To give the appearance of grinding from the bottom, they send these artists out to book small venues and connect with local video directors, along with local studios. In reality, they're waiting on their time to be pushed into the spotlight. To us, it seems as if we saw them working hard to get there. But their connections are already in place, and they're well aware of the manufactured career they're leading. Most of them were never real rappers, hence Lil Yaddy stating he's not a rapper. No, not a rapper. Yo, wait, tell me, tell me. So ask yourself, why is he there? What's his purpose? If they said Drake and Nicki were discovered on MySpace. What they don't tell you is those artists have had a connection to entertainment since childhood. They usher these artists in, give them riders, and give the old rags to riches story. Let's take Eminem as another example. He was close friends with a rapper Proof. Proof was already born into the industry. His father was McKinley Jackson and was Marvin Gaye's music director until the musician allegedly passed away. And he was also the music director for Temptations. So there's the connection. By the way, what do you think Proof's album cover is telling you? Comment below. Later on Eminem, grabbed a yellow wolf. Next to Dwight Yoakam, at only six years old, or seeing Run DMC stop by his house to party with his folks. I don't know, if you're hanging out with Run DMC in your childhood, you're kind of destined to be a musician. By the time that he was a young adult, this gave Michael all the encouragement he needed to stay. One baby Tate's mother is Dionne Ferris. In the early 90s, she released a song on Love Jones soundtrack called Hopeless. Young Baby says, nepotism implies that someone in power used theirs to enhance mine, which isn't the case for me. I put myself on, now people are finding out who my parents are, after five years of a slow grind, trying to imply shit was easy for me. We know this is not true, these people are already given the blueprint and contacts needed by being born into it. 
This brings me to the guy who wrote Tupac's first mainstream song, Ray Love. Oh, no, 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 no. This is Adrian Gregory, too. Okay. This is, this is one of the mentors right here. This is uh, management. This is, the, in the beginning, label. All the made the deal go down. Uh, made nice. the deal go Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Yeah. Tupac went to audition for Shock, and what was supposed to happen was Ray and Tupac were supposed to go. Ray Love. Ray Love. Ray Love's grandfather is Cab Calloway. Yep. And a lot of people, and so his dad wasn't interested in Ray being in this business because he knew so much about the business, probably good and bad. Ray Love is related to Cab Calloway. A singer, dancer, and band leader, Cab Calloway led one of the most popular African American big bands during the jazz and swing eras of the 1930s. With Harlem's famous Cotton Club as his home stage, he influenced countless performers, including Michael and Janet Jackson, and many of today's contemporary artists. So once again the connections are there. These are not regular kids that have no prior connections like most of us. Talent is always ignored in this industry, nepotism promotes name over talent. It's a family business, and you're not related. Yeah, I didn't know that, but yeah, it was nepotism. I got him in the movie. Even DMX record label was called Bloodline Records. Hollywood is a, it's a clique. It's a tight, set family. And um, you, don't, you don't bring in outsiders. This game, like I was trying to say, is... It's a family. These rappers step into the rap scene and create a fake rags to riches story to appeal to those trying to make it, creating false hope. On the other hand, they also push rappers to have the rich to richer story by way of selling drugs. The trap music was used to indicate trap houses, old abandoned houses where drug dealing and consumption were common and where many of those who entered ended up being trapped in that lifestyle. It glamorizes drug money, houses, luxury cars, jewelry, expensive watches, designer clothes, all from drug money. Mainstream promotes this, turning industry plant rappers into role models for young fans who follow them. Just hearing without- See the same stereotypes of black and brown people depicted in hip-hop music? What if I told you that some of the biggest music companies are in cahoots with private prison owners? And that the rap music we listen to is not only meant to entertain, but to verbally and visually support criminal behaviors that funnel disenfranchised people into these private prisons. Lastly, what if I told you I have proof? In 2012, Core Civic, formerly known as Corrections Corporation of America, the biggest name in the private prison industry, contacted 48 states offering to buy their prisons. One requirement of eligibility for the deal was particularly strange, an assurance by the agency partner that the agency has sufficient inmate population to maintain a minimum 90% occupancy rate over the term of the contract. Wait, try it? What? What kind of legal and ethical measures could be taken to ensure the maintenance of a 90% prison occupancy rate? Now let's work together to connect these things. I'm sure you're a smart person. It won't be long. Let's do the work. In 2012, a mere 232 media executives were responsible for the intake of 277 million Americans controlling all avenues necessary to manufacture any celebrity and spark any trend. Time Warner, as the owner of Warner Brothers Records, can not only sign an artist, but since they're also owners of Entertainment Weekly, they can also put an artist on the cover by next week. You think you choose what you listen to, but do you? Both BET and MTV belong to Viacom. Okay, okay, now, I know that's not news to some, but... When the use of these media conglomerates is cross-checked with ownership of the biggest names in prison privatization, it's starting to get a little fishy. The largest holder in Core Civic, formerly Corrections Corp of America, is Vanguard Group Incorporated. Vanguard is the number one largest holder in both Viacom and Time Warner. Vanguard is also the largest holder in the GEO Group, the second largest owner of private prisons in the U.S. The overlap in private prison slash mass media ownership is disturbing. Let's make this clear. The people who own the media are the same people who own private prisons. The exact same people. They make money from getting so-and-so from the hood to glorify the life they live. 
and they don't care about the impact it has on others because money is the motive. Then when the music influences others in criminal behavior, they make money from all the impressionable low income people of color that are expected to go inside their private prisons. You can research these companies yourself, by the way, it's not hit. Of paying much attention to the meaning of the words, humming sentences, which are repeated obsessively in the mind, certainly have an influence. Now everyone holds stacks of money wrapped in rubber bands in music videos. Kids now want dope money, only to look like a rapper in videos. And they also set more traps by adding a trap museum. And, and, and this is this is exactly what we did it for. Yeah. To celebrate the culture. <laughs> The college educated family man glorifying the mental and spiritual demise of the youth, and he gets rewarded. Notice that those that started the trap trend are in very high places. Notice Young Thug grew up in the neighborhood of other rappers, Waka Flocka, 2 Chains, Ludacris. Ludacris's father has a connection to Denzel Washington. In fact, Ludacris, Chris Bridges is here tonight. His father, Wayne Bridges and I grew up together in the club. You don't know me. Shaking your head, you know Wayne? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Little baby childhood friends, including Young Thug and Coach K. Notice all of these mainstream artists come up together. Anyone outside of the group never makes it mainstream. Hollywood is a, it's a clique. It's a tight, set family. You don't, you don't bring in outsiders. This game, like I was trying to say, is... It's a family. One would think at least Hurricane Chris has a real rags to riches story. No. I ain't grow up with Boosie, but I grew up around Boosie. Um, when I was probably like 12 years old, I used to come to Shreveport all the time and do music in our studio. So. Even Nas, his father was Olu Dara. He was the leading trumpet player in New York's burgeoning loft jazz scene in the 1960s. He began accompanying Cassandra Wilson and is featured on three of the highly regarded vocalist albums. I'll point you to the YouTube channel of Unplug Him on Nas being an industry plant. And there was the line, either cruising in a six cab or Montero Jeep. Complete where the cruising in the six cab or Montero Jeep. Where the cruising in the six cab or Montero Jeep. As famously stated in Nas's The World Is Yours, produced by Pete Rock from the album Illmatic 1994, Nas's debut album, which was all the rage in all of the top and, and most renowned and respected hip hop producers at the time, came together through Columbia Records and the gatekeepers there. They were brought together to produce Nas's debut album, which was considered a classic almost instantly. I believe it got five mics from the source, one of a few debut albums to do that. This particular line in this particular song, one of the singles from Nas's album, the single The World Is Yours, that line famously uh, put Montero on the map as a hot Jeep because this was the hottest album by the hottest rapper at the time, overstand, check. So here you see Nas, who was influenced by Dr. York too, with the sun in the back as the sun is going down. So you get a red sun, he's wearing red. This is all symbolism. The directors of videos are aware of this because of Nas's positioning. The way he was positioned to be the top dog and to be classic and drop a classic album and have all the best producers at the time. I maintain that there were brotherhood members, 
surrounding him. MC Search had a lot to do with founding him. And MC Search was tied in with the Revelation 2 and 9 kin. So he says, deep, deep like, like the shining, shining, sparkle like a diamond sneaker ooze. Which is a reference to Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece, which is highly touted among many critics and fans, yes. But it is also seen as a work of art written with brotherhood secret symbolism to brotherhood members. They see it differently than you and me, who might think, oh yeah, you know, that was a pretty decent psychological thriller. But in reality, they understand that it is a tale that is written using Freemasonic symbology and that's a big deal of the third degree way before the rock 1994 is showing the hand symbol that we saw Ted P do and we saw Shaka do what they all have in common they're all plugged in years ago nepotism was the main way of doing business if you were born into a family of farmers, you were going to be a farmer and take over the family business. So think about it, why would any of the rappers, music execs, producers put you on when they have family and friends they can put on, assets are passed down from generation to generation. As business ideas become more developed over time, maybe we'll see a shift. But nepotism is part of the business world and it is most likely not going anywhere. Where does that leave the local rappers? Well, mainstream rappers are seen as uneducated high school dropouts, it leaves many of the local hungry artists following the same steps. Thinking rapping will get them rich quickly, so education is not needed. Young Jeezy appear to sell drugs and rap, so they follow and get trapped. Not realizing Jeezy and BMF has been connected to intelligence from the start. More on the so-called big drug dealers later. With all of this all in perspective, it makes sense that trap music was a product designed to benefit private prison systems. Remember the mem, Jeezy told you to trap or die, but sent his son to college. When in reality those mainstream artists never sold drugs or dropped out, in fact, most if not all of them attended college, it's as if hip-hop hates the educated rapper. Historically, America has always feared intelligent black men. White mainstream Americans profess to hate so-called rap music, so what's the reason for them to back it financially and give it a platform? Maybe it's because it helps dumb down the rest of society, it counters the music that will inspire black people to challenge the status quo. Nepotism will provide an initial boost to your career, it's not your talent and hard work that help you survive in the industry. Every artist that pops up on a worldwide scale, we must understand they may have a family member within the industry. I've noticed some rappers always claim their father was killed or no longer around. I tend to think they're hiding them to keep up the idea that these rappers are from the streets only. But the father just may be the connection. If you still believe in the music industry at all, you have been blinded. The Music Awards, a group of elitists, nepotism that gets rewards for their contributions for following the rules. The members of the Recording Academy get to sit in their gilded castles, laughing about how Jay-Z won the most awards, which was chosen by them, not the people. It's a game built on nepotism, cosigns, and transfers of power. One must remember in 1996 Tupac was the artist that held the most power and influence. During the fake East Coast West Coast beef, Tupac often shouted an underground artist Jay-Z name. I see this as transferring the powers as Tupac's time was ending. At 7-Eleven New York rapper, Jay-Z from Hawaiian Soapy fame. Bad boy killer, Jay-Z got to, looking out for my beat. All you mother Jay Z, Lil Kino, 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 all of y'all Jay Z. Hey yo, Sassy, one of them tracks I can just ride on mother. Ain't no nigga like me. Jay Z, he broke and I smoke dead. The fact that Tupac repeatedly used the fairly underground rapper Jay Z's name, while disregarding others such as Kill Kill, suggests something was being orchestrated. The series of diss tracks allowed people to pay more attention to Jay Z. They wouldn't otherwise. Once Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac were removed, Jay Z was elevated. For instance, more people know about Machine Gun Kelly now that Eminem dissed him in his song. 
Nowadays they're pushed on platforms such as Vlad TV. If they want to promote a celebrity or artist they use Vlad, Vlad is known for pushing fake stories into the community. A Masonic gatekeeper. Oh, I'm like, you know, Dave Chappelle, I put together the dots and shit that shouldn't be put together. You know what I mean? So you think it's a conspiracy? Nah, I ain't conspiracy. It is what it is. I don't know, though. I mean, staging a robbery? I mean, I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know. Are you a mason or something? No. Okay, well. I'm here. here. I actually joined the Freemasons at one point. Are you a, a mason? Yeah, but, but yeah, I'm, I guess I'm technically one, Damn. but I got sworn in. What? Oh, wow. That's yeah, crazy. I, I just didn't do the stuff. You didn't have to pay for nothing? You just got sworn in? I just got sworn in, yeah. Okay. I went through the, the initiation ritual. Hip hop still plays out as a lineage of inheritances, even ASAP Rocky, who seemed to be an organic cause of a people's champion, but breaking into the ranks of rap's mainstream, was carefully orchestrated, a long con. You would think there are artists who break through to different levels of success by using social media. Not worldwide success. They may go viral, and then be forgotten about. Never no real push by the mainstream. The industry seems to have certain priorities. Certain artists are designed to come out and die with dates that match the powers that be numerology. It's all conspiracy, most of the music was and is controlled by organized crime, which answers to the intelligence agencies. Given an agenda to promote, hence, some artists sexualizing kids, drill music, etc. Always remember most of these mainstream artists are from parents born outside of the US. Can you win if the game is rigged? I leave you with a quote from Sebastian Okabe. The numbers are stacked up against you, the chances of you making it are slim to none. If it sounds like I'm trying to discourage you, that's because I am. The game is filled with nepotism, and the last thing we need is yet another dreamer wasting time running after something that will undoubtedly prove to be in vain. The industry is filled with agendas, fake events, scripted lives, destruction, death, etc. Please do yourself a favor and start your own business, fuck the labels, find your purpose, have a family, live happily ever after. There are millions of rappers, these established artists, producers, record execs will more than likely bring in their friends or family, if they need a superstar. And that's why you will never make it as a mainstream rapper.